video number three. Okay, let's be serious. Today. Today um, is a time lapse of my surfboard painting plus answering some Q and A's. I mean, answering some Q's with some A's. Let's begin. Hello, it's Voice of Veronica here to answer your questions that you gave me on Instagram. Okay, let's begin. Question one. How did you make your beautiful hobby into a business? Well, basically for the last five years, I've worked at the hospital um, as a phlebotomist until last December of 2019 when I decided to move here to Santa Cruz and give my business my all. And basically what led up to this was I was working on my business on my off days or after a shift where I was running my Etsy shop. I was doing commission paintings, trying to meet deadlines, um, and I was very busy on my days off, even from my uh, day job. And I was at a point where I was getting, it was getting so hard for me to not be trying to work on my art business while I was on shift at the hospital. Like I would be responding to Instagrams, I would be emailing clients, I would be making wholesale orders and all sorts of stuff from my phone while I was at work. And I realized it was like really stressing me out and that I would love to just devote all my time to my business um, since it just seemed like it was filling my every waking moment outside of work. So that's kind of when I decided to make the shift. Um, but I just wanted to make sure of a few things before I really just quit my job and moved. And that was one that I had enough savings for at least six months into the future. I had more than that, but I think six months is probably a pretty good buffer. And I wanted to make sure that my commissions and sales were steadily trending upward. So I would look at my income over time um, in the previous year and orders on Etsy and make sure that it was all trending in the right direction consistently. And third, I wanted to make sure that I was going to have enough work that when I did quit my day job, I was gonna still be basically working full time, if not more for myself. And I definitely did have enough to do. So that's kind of when I made the jump. It's still scary sometimes because of the feast or famine kind of lifestyle you live as an artist, but it's definitely one of the things that makes me the happiest in life. Question number two, and I'm also gonna combine it with question number three, so I'll read you both. Favorite way to get out of a creative slump? And the other question is, where do you get your artistic inspiration from and how do you avoid creative burnout? So basically my favorite way to get out of a creative slump would be to go outside and seek new inspiration, see new landscapes, get some exercise. Um, around here I, I end up mountain biking a lot, surfing, and just taking walks down by the ocean um, to observe nature and look at the waves and the cypress trees here are so beautiful and just kind of open my eyes to like these cool little nooks and crannies around where I live. Um, yeah, so just getting outside, observing nature, getting some exercise, seeing some new landscapes. Obviously, when COVID isn't in full swing, traveling is a huge source of inspiration because you get to see so much new stuff that, that I end up coming home with like a head full of paintings in mind and, you know, all sorts of art that I want to make. So, and also I do get some of my inspiration from Pinterest when... I'm really in a creative slump. Sometimes I'll just kind of scroll through my Pinterest boards and look at photographs that I really like and um, other artwork that other artists have done. And a lot of times that's very helpful. Question number three. How long did it take you to get your brush stroke technique so fluid? So actually I've never paid any particular attention to my stroke technique. In fact, I've never even been aware of like how my hand moves until I've been watching these videos back recently. Um, I didn't realize sometimes my strokes were so like small and quick. Um, but yeah, I don't have a super amazing answer for this question. Mostly just that it's all time and practice and your brain just starts to make connections with how your hand should move the more you do it. Question number four regular water or diet water i gotta say neither i i prefer champagne and number five what is the one or more thing or things that will always make you happy number one always will make me happy is my family and number two obviously running this business creates a huge amount of daily satisfaction and happiness along with many other things but i think those would be the two most relevant to these videos